Welcome to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette, with your host Steve Garrett, MC and DJ at one of the largest Corvette weekends in the country, Corvette Fun Fest, president of the Corvette Club of Kansas City, Missouri, and radio disc jockey at the number one radio station in Kansas City for over 40 years. Here's Steve Garrett. Thanks for listening and watching Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette and the only current podcast dedicated to Corvette. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. I appreciate you tuning in. Corvette Today is brought to you by Wheelcraft. Want to dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels? Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models, and it comes with a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com today or call 833-840-5334. You can listen to Corvette today on all podcast platforms. You can also listen on your smart device. Just say, hey, Google or Alexa, play the podcast called Corvette Today, and you're connected. Be sure and visit the updated Corvette Today website. It's corvettetoday.com. You can also access everything there, including the Corvette Today merchandise store. You can also join the Corvette Today Facebook group there and sign up for Corvette Today emails, notifications, and updates at corvettetoday.ck.page. And if you like YouTube, you can subscribe to the Corvette Today YouTube channel. See all Corvette Today episodes on YouTube. And be sure and patronize our flagship sponsors of Corvette today, Aerolari Wheels, a true forged wheel with over 20 different unique styles to choose from for your C8 and wide-body versions of the C7, C6, and C5 Corvettes. It's an amazing value, starting at only $23.88 for a set of four fully forged wheels. And use the promo code CT111 and get $100 off your purchase. Visit aerolari.com, that's A E R O L A R R I.com, and use the promo code CT111 for your $100 discount. Also, midenginecorvetteforum.com, the forum that focuses on the new mid engine C8 Corvette. Meet a lot of Corvette enthusiasts like yourself at midenginecorvetteforum.com. And a shout out to Corvette Forum and CanadianCorvetteForum.com, welcoming Corvette enthusiasts from around the world. It's time to bring you the latest Corvette news and headlines with my buddy Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. Keith is here every other week, about twice per month. We keep you current and up to date on what's happening with America's sports car. Keith, welcome back to the show. My oh my, it was a busy week last week, wasn't it, buddy? You know, as we were talking off air, I like to say that it was a target-rich environment. <laughs> Great stuff happening. Of course, we have all kinds of stuff. We've got pricing, we've got production notes, we've got E-Ray release, we've got new awards for the Z06. I mean, it was really a blogger's dream last week in terms of not having to look very hard to find the content. It was coming to us left and right. It's a great time to be a Corvette fan, that's for sure. Definitely. And we will cover everything for you. First, as we always do, Keith, let's get production numbers with Corvette from the Bowling Green Assembly Plant. The Corvette assembly plant is really cranking out the Stingrays. Our VIN count on the regular production Stingrays will surpass 23,000 this week. And we're also at around 2,300 70th anniversary editions built for the Stingrays. You combine those two numbers, and that's 25,000 Stingrays that have already been produced for the 2023 model year. Z06 numbers, we're still lagging just a little bit. We're still in this slow kind of release and production rollout. But we just hit a new high last week with 23 cars built in a single day. Wow. And that was 20 regular Z06s and three anniversary cars. Our production count for the Z06s lags a couple days behind, but at our last count, we were at over 600 Z06s produced. On top of that, another 66 70th anniversary cars were produced. We've got new orders that went in for January with new TPW, so they're producing those. The one things that we haven't really seen yet are any really new people coming out with a high-wing car. So, obviously, the big aero packages there for the Z07 are still highly constrained, but they are making the base cars. We're closing in on 700 or so, so that's a good number. I think that's a great number, to be honest with you, buddy. That sounds really good. Also, we found out that GM delivered over 9,000 Corvettes in Q4 of 2022, which is a pretty healthy number as well. Yeah, you know, we've been kind of limited and stuck in that 8,000 range, and we really need to get up to the high nines or 10,000 over the three months and a quarter to get to that 40,000 mark is where they really want to see the C8s going for it. Of course, I think the maximum production, if you were to really scale maximum production over the course of the 12 months, I think we're looking at like 44,000 Corvettes that could be produced. So if we can get up into that 38, that 40,000 range, that's really saying something. That would be great news for Chevrolet that that many Corvettes being produced. 
For fourth quarter, we did see 9,130 new Corvettes produced. That was a 10% increase over the same time in 2021, which only saw the 8293 Corvettes produced. So like I said, you can extend those. And how do you do that? By supply chain issues not coming and hitting you and making you go away for a week or so. And that's what's happened previously is it seems like every quarter we've always had that one week where we've had to shut down because of production. And then that just blows the counts away. It's doing well, you know, for the calendar year, we saw January, December of 2022, a total of 34,500 Corvettes were delivered. And these are U.S. numbers, so these don't include the exports. That was an increase of 4.5% over 2021. So we're growing, we're producing more cars, and if we can just get the supply chain humps from really impacting us hard for like a week or more in a quarter, we're going to reach that 40,000 car mark. It could actually happen. That'd be fantastic. Also, bragging rights of the top 10 Corvette dealers in the United States. We saw that McMullen sold more Corvettes last year than anybody else. Yeah, Mike Furman reminded us that this is the first time since the mid-60s that the world's largest Corvette dealer wasn't located in New Jersey. Of course, we had Sioka and Kerbeck. They've held the title for the last 27 years. But before then, it was Malcolm Connor Chevrolet, which had it since the mid-60s. It's really saying something that McMulkin has come in, has built their Corvette sales from barely nothing to the powerhouse that it is today. And now they're officially the top Corvette seller in the world, beating Sioka by 45 cars. Anytime you get a dealer working that hard for their customers, there's going to be good things that happen. For the last year, we've heard of people have been getting their cars a little bit faster from McMulkin. We learned that they were actually doing some dealer swaps. So another dealer ends up with an allocation and they would swap them something else for that car so they would get that Corvette allocation. So that's how they were able to grow. And in fact, in the top 10, and I'll, I'll run through the top 10 numbers real quick. They were McMulkin, Sioka, Mike Furman and Criswell Chevrolet's third, Bombin Dadeland, Les Stanford Chevrolet, Stingray Chevrolet, Bombden in West Kendall. You know, the interesting thing is that these Bombden dealerships, they're five miles away, and two of them landed in the top 10. Wow. The day land in the West Kendall. Number eight was Rick Hendrick in Duluth, Georgia. Number nine was Coglin Chevrolet and our friend Rick Conti at number nine there. And then 10 was George Maytick in Michigan. The list hasn't really changed so much from last year. There was a couple of guys that kind of switched positions. But what we found was that only three dealers in that top 10 grew year to year. So it was Mike Furman grew, as well as Baumann and Dadeland and McMulkin. The other top 10 dealers actually lost sales over that year. So that just tells you that even though we focus a lot on the top 10, even the top 50, most Corvette sales happen outside those numbers. So it's always good to talk to your local dealer, find out what they've got. A lot of these guys had these C8 lists that went on and on, but for the most part, they've worked through them. So we talked to a few dealers this year that said, yeah, we used to have a huge list, but now we can order a car and you'll probably get it in four to six months or so. Nice. Things are moving a little bit quicker in that regard. So yeah, top 10 lists for Corvette dealers. We are still hoping to get the full top 100 list that we'd like to share every year as well. We will do that too. Well, congratulations to McMulkin and everybody in the top 10. Mike Furman's got to be approaching his 6,000th Corvette sale here coming up pretty soon. We'll check in with Mike and get him back on the show. Also, our big, big debut last week was the E-Ray for Corvette. And it was really cool, Keith, because it was on the 70th anniversary of the debut of the C1 Corvette at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City. Yeah, you know, they made a big deal out of it. Obviously, the E-Ray is Chevrolet's first electrified version of the Corvette with a front drive motor and battery system providing power to those front wheels. And it's the first Corvette with all-wheel drive. So we kind of made a bullet list. Here's what enthusiasts should really know about it. The car has a single motor capable of 160 horsepower and 125 foot-pounds of torque that powers those front wheels. And there's a battery pack. It's a 1.9 kilowatt battery pack, which is located between the seats in that center tunnel. We've always known it was going to be there, and they kind of cleared it out in the last year to make that space. There are some cutaways. There's a cutaway chassis that actually shows the battery pack in that center tunnel. Like we knew, this car is not a plug-in. These batteries are recharged by normal driving, coasting, and braking. And when you combine that front motor drive to the LV2 V8, you're looking at a combined horsepower of 655, just under the Z07. It's amazing, in fact, how close the stats are with the Z06. Chevy's claiming a 2.5 seconds, 0 to 60, and a 10.5 seconds quarter mile at 130 miles an hour. And that's quicker than the Z06 as well. So this is actually Chevy's quickest production Corvette ever built. Some other things that have come up, we've got the stealth mode, which gives you up to 45 miles an hour on electric power and a range of like three or four miles. It's not a huge 
huge range, but they call it getting out of the neighborhood mode. You know, you can do it quietly without waking the neighbors. The big news, I think, for a lot of people is that the front lost no space up front with the addition of the motor. The very bottom corners have changed just a little bit for the most part. I think 98% of that space is still there. So that's all good. The big concern about the car was the weight. And we're seeing that a coupe has a dry weight of 3,744 pounds and the convertible's dry weight is 3,856. So when you do add the fluids, you do add the drivers, you know, you're pushing that 4,000 pounds mark. But yet that electric motor is still able to launch you in faster than the Z06. So still think that's saying quite a bit. And finally, the starting MSRP, very strong, a lot stronger than a lot of us were hoping for. It came in at 104295 But that is with the inclusion of the carbon ceramic brakes, a magnetic selective ride control, and you have the all-weather tires on there. I think if you were to add up those options, if they weren't standard, you know, you'd probably be looking at around 92, 93 for the car. They wanted to lower the weight. And plus with that power, they wanted to make sure that you had the stopping power with the carbon ceramic. So that's how you get to the 104. The E-Ray was on display on both coasts with celebrations happening at the Peterson and then also at the Waldorf Astoria, we believe. And we hear that it's going to be displayed at the Washington Auto Show this week. So good place to see it if you're there. We shared some photos. They had a uh, car set up inside the Corvette Assembly plant and some people from over the National Corvette Museum came by to take a look at it. It's just such an interesting car. The E-Ray, this Corvette, I mean, it's nearly equal power to the Z06, but it's really a GT Cruiser, whereas the Z06 is a track weapon. In fact, Tad Stucker says that the Z06 is a scalpel for the track, while the E-Ray is for everything else. All indications are the E-Ray will be coming at the end of 2023, and the first deliveries may not happen until January 2024. So still got a little time to go. We did see a disclaimer now on the E-Ray site on Chevrolet.com that said end of the year of 2023. We're going to be finding out a lot more about this car. Hopefully, we'll be able to see it when we go to like the Bash and Carlisle and some of the other shows. Really exciting stuff. What a neat car. Can't wait to see it. I can't wait either. And it was interesting because Taj did call the Z06 the scalpel, but he called the E-Ray the Swiss Army knife. So I thought that was a real neat analogy. <laughs> uh-huh. Also, the C8 Z06 Keith was named Road and Tracks Performance Car of the Year outstanding it was and there was some really stiff competition obviously you have a porsche cayman gt4 you've got the huracan from lamborghini i quoted this from the article it says as difficult choices go this was an easy one says road and track so they tested the top 10 vehicles for 2023 on the track and on the streets they come up with their winner the z06 was the fastest of all contenders at monticello motor clubs track in upstate new york it had a lap speed of one minute and 20 seconds wow beating out the second place Porsche by two full seconds and it was two and a half seconds faster than the Lamborghini. Congratulations to the Z06 there. One of the first of many awards I think we're going to see this car win. Definitely. Well, buddy, let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk about Corvette racing and Corvette rumors here on Corvette Today. We all know that wheels make the car. Wheelcraft will help you take your Corvette to new levels. Wheelcraft offers the world's best PVD chrome finish available on the market. Available in bright chrome and black chrome. Wheelcraft nails it in both appearance and durability. And it comes with a five-year warranty against brake dust burns, pitting, peeling, and color delimination. Wheelcraft is also ISO certified. Whether you're having your wheels refinished or an exchange transaction, there is no core fee, no deposit, and you don't pay for the finished wheels until they are installed on your car. Wheelcraft insists on complete satisfaction before you pay. Hear from one of our customers. I picked up a brochure at the National Corvette Museum and we took delivery of our new C8. I called Wheelcraft and in 15 minutes I ordered the new bright ice chrome wheels. Wheelcraft's follow-up and follow-through is superb. The wheels arrived on Sunday, installed on Monday, and cores were returned same day. The wheels are the highest quality I've ever seen and they look awesome. Great prices, great customer service from initial contact to installation. Thanks, Dennis from Nashville. In many cases, Wheelcraft offers finished wheels on exchange or will apply this new finish to your wheels. Either way, Wheelcraft treats your wheels as their own. Visit our website at wheelcraft.com or call us at 833-840-5334. Arrive in style with Wheelcraft. The Radiator Grill Store offers protection for your C8's front radiators and side intakes. They also carry front strut tower covers to prevent rusting and pooling water, all with do-it-yourself installation. Get 10% off your total purchase with promo code CT10. See the full line of products at radiatorgrillstore.com. When you want to buy a Corvette, or any Chevrolet for that matter, get yours from Hendrick Chevrolet Shawnee Mission located in Kansas City. 
Hendrick Chevrolet is the largest Corvette dealership and showroom in the Midwest. With a knowledgeable sales staff and Corvette sales specialists on hand, they'll help you build the Corvette of your dreams, and they ship nationwide. With Corvette certified master mechanics on site and a huge parts department with over 24,000 parts and $2 million in inventory, Hendrick Chevrolet is well equipped to take care of your every need. From sales to service to collision repair, Hendrick Chevrolet has you covered. Visit ChevyUSA.com or call 913-384-1550. VetFinders.com is the Internet's original Corvette classified ads website with classified ads starting at just $25. And every ad runs until your Corvette is sold. If you're in the market for a Corvette, VetFinders.com has over 500 Corvettes for sale from all around the USA and Canada and covering all eight generations. Visit VetFinders.com, the Internet's destination for buying and selling Corvettes. That's V-E-T-T-E Finders.com. And now, back to the only current podcast on Corvettes, Corvette Today, with your host, Steve Garrett. Thanks for listening and watching Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by Wheelcraft. Want to dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels? Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models, and it comes with a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com or call them at 833 833- Eight four zero five three three four. I'm your host Steve Garrett. With me is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. We've got all the news that's current and up to date in the world of Corvette. In this second section, we always talk about Corvette racing and Corvette rumors. First, I'm real excited about this, Keith. I've liked this car from the get go. The GT3 R is going to be debuted at the Rolex 24 at the end of January. That's going to be really exciting. Yeah, you know, we still got mostly a year left of development time ahead of us. And I think the first customers will probably get their car later this year. Corvette Racing, they posted this teaser video through the Team Chevy social channels showing the 2024 Corvette Z06 GT3R that we caught testing at Sebring International Raceway, I think, last month or so. They showed some of that footage, and then their post on the social media says, taking the wraps off the Corvette Z06 GT3R on January 27th. That's this Friday. I don't know if we're just going to see it parked out in front of the Chevy garages there as they've done with previous cars in the past, or if we'll actually see the car on the track, which I think would be fantastic because then, you know, everybody would get to hear the car at speed. But they're making progress on it. We're going to have a chance to see it later this week. That sounds fantastic. As a matter of fact, Laura Clouser was just back on the show right after the beginning of the year, and she talked about the GT3R. So I can't wait to see that coming up next weekend. Also, this is not really Corvette news, but it's General Motor news and it's racing news. Andretti Global teams up with General Motors and Cadillac. They are pursuing a Formula One team, which I think is outstanding. Yeah, you know, we always thought that Corvette Racing's place was rightfully in GT competition. But now that we see these LMDH cars and they're going for the overall wins at Le Mans, it sure would be nice to see the cross flags there. And now we got talk of a F1 team. Pretty amazing for Cadillac Racing. It's not a done deal. The crazy thing in F1 is that you need to have all the other teams approve your entry to come in. And, and apparently that comes down to money a lot of times. And, if you know, we bring in another team that's going to dilute the winnings for everybody else. Else and we can't have that. And why would you allow a competitor a foothold into your sport? There's a whole lot of politics going on in F1. This is not a done deal for sure, but it sure would be nice to see General Motors involved in F1 racing. I'd love that. That'd be fantastic. I got caught up in the Netflix Drive to Survive series, so I'd love to see GM and Cadillac in Formula One. Also, Corvette Racing is going to round out the WEC lineup with the number 33 C8R car. That'll be exciting to see. Yeah, so we originally had Nikki Katzberg, he's our factory driver, and we added Ben Keating, our amateur driver, and then there was still a third seat that was open. So they held a training session or a testing session right after Bahrain, the day after the Bahrain race last year. And one of the guys they brought in was a Argentinian driver named Nico Verone. He's going to be joining the car. I'm not sure if he's a bronze level or a silver, but apparently people like him. He has some really good things to say about the team. And so who knows? We'll see how he does over in the W. See, we only have six races over there. The very first one actually is here in the United States, the 1,000 Hours of Sebring in March. So that'll be our first chance to get to know him a little bit more. 
Wow, a thousand hours. That's amazing. No, no. Did I say a thousand? I'm sorry, Steve. A thousand miles. A thousand hours would be a very long race. That's right. That would be a long race for sure. <laughs> Good catch there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we clarified that. In the rumor section, Keith, is Corvette redoing their EPA testing on the 2024 C8s? This comes from, we've had spy photos of both the European and the American spec Corvette Stingrays with these EPA testing exhaust tips. They're, they're longer, they're silver, they stick out, and they allow it to clamp onto testing equipment that measures emissions. The idea was, oh, they, they must be giving us more power. Are we going to see a power bump? Is it going to be over 500 horsepower? But I think really what this is coming down to is there's so much more safety equipment coming on the cars in both the European and the American versions. Because of regulations, they're basically basically have to go redo the car homologations again, which includes emissions testing. With the E-Ray reveal, we learned that all 2024 models are now going to have the lane keep assist with lane departure warnings, you know, so if you start to drift over that line, you know, it's going to buzz you or maybe the steering wheel will kind of fight you a little bit. We've got the forward collision alert and then the following distance indicator. These are all new for 2024. And that's on top of the other safety features. We already had the side blind zone alerts, the rear cross traffic alerts and rear park assist. So it's actually becoming more safer to drive these cars with the safety equipment. And you've got to test it, make sure that it's all there. And apparently with some of the additional weights added to the cars, they have to do the testing over. Would it be nice if they said, well, you know, why we're in there, let's just see what we can do and maybe come out at 505 or 510 or 515 horsepower. That's still possible. I'm not so sure that that's going to happen and nor is that the focus of that testing. So it looks like it's just all has to do with the new safety features. Sounds good. Also in the Corvette rumor section, Keith and I want to bring in our Corvette insider, Manny Catechus from Muscle Cars and Trucks. Manny, it's good to have you back on the show. I saw earlier this week where you posted that the C9 still might have an internal combustion engine. Is that right? That's according to an analysis company called Auto Forecast Solutions. It's juicy, right? Could it really happen? And what they basically are saying is after about 2028 or so, the C8 will sunset and bring in the C9 and it will ride on a Y3 architecture. Now, Y3 assume that it's an evolution of Y2, which is what the C8 is on. Interestingly, the forecast had everything broken down by vehicle architecture. So Y3 was separate from, we'll say, like Bev Prime. And Bev Prime is GM's higher-end Altium battery platform. I know that, for example, the Corvette electric sedan will be on Bev Prime. I think the SUV as well. So the fact that AFS is saying that Y3 and the C9 Corvette on Y3 is going to be a separate thing, very intriguing to me. It's really hard to have any concrete evidence or planning this far out. It's getting close to where stuff would start to get solidified and galvanized for, we'll say, the next generation towards like the end of the decade, right? It's 2023. Normally, things start to really solidify five to six years away. It's possible. The other thing that would give credence to this is that GM is also making new engines. They're working on new engine technology. They'll put these new engines, these new powertrains in their pickup trucks as well. This was confirmed by GM's president in a presentation in 2021 or early 2022. So that means we've got new engines, a timeline that suggests a new Corvette architecture, and it's not on a battery vehicle architecture. We could see GM getting a little clever here and kind of doing what Ford is doing with the Mustang in that by offering the Mach-E, they are able to offer an internal combustion Mustang coupe muscle car as well. So it could mean that with a Corvette electric SUV and a Corvette electric sedan, the C9 could, in theory, keep its combustion engine ethos. That'd be pretty exciting for everyone. I'm not sure how electric vehicles and the visceral feel of a Corvette can coexist as we know it. It could take another generation. You know, it could be C10. But then again, you know, General Motors, lately they've been very hard on all electric future, quote unquote with certain headwinds such as lithium pricing, cobalt, and other commodities and supply chain issues, they might have to delay those plans and that could yield to more combustion engine vehicles, medium to long term. I'll consider long term by end of the decade, early next decade, by mid next decade, who knows? Yeah. And it's interesting because I know that GM says they want to go all electric by 2035. Isn't that correct? 
Yep, that's correct. Before, I think it was like 2030. And then now it was like, oh, we're going to have this many electric vehicles by 2025. And then it turns into like, oh, well, we think we're going to have electric vehicles that are profitable by 2025 with the goal of going electric by 2035 and yada, yada, yada. So, okay, 2035. Yeah. The thing is, too, is like that also means that like your HD trucks are going to go electric. And as far as the feasibility of that in the present, I don't think that's possible. They need a quantum leap in battery technology, something that's much lighter, much less resource intensive, and at the same time delivering the range of capability that those customers demand. And right now, that math doesn't check out. Yep, that's for sure. Well, Manny, thanks for being back on Corvette today. When you've got more Corvette Insider news, let us know. We'll have you back on the show. Always love to be here. Thanks. You bet. Keith and I will take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the lighter side of Corvette coming up next on Corvette Today. Are you ready for a better insurance policy without the Corvette tax? With agreed value protection, the value of your collector vehicle will never change. Plus, you'll save money. Get a quick quote at ncminsurance.com. Hey, honey, are you awake? Mm, I am now. I can't sleep. Since turning 50, I keep dreaming of a red door and a blue door, somehow knowing there are only choices for retirement. Okay. Through the red door, we outlive our money. We have to rely on our kids. We're stuck on a fixed income. It's terrifying. Yeah, that would suck. But through the blue door, our money outlives us. We retire on our terms. Our kids stay our kids, not our caretakers. We make work optional. Yes, that's much better. That's what I want too, but what do we do? We call True Wealth and Company at 913-653-8783. They specialize in helping successful people make work optional. They're our fiduciary Blue Door personal wealth managers. Hey, where are you going? It's 3 a.m. I can't sleep. I'm going to check out True Wealth and Company online at retirewithtrue.com. That Blue Door is going to be our retirement. 913-653-8783. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Investment advice offered through True Wealth and Company, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. American Hydrocarbon is your one-stop shop for custom interior, exterior, and engine bay items for your C4 through C8 Corvette. We can help you create a custom look for your Corvette with carbon fiber or 10 different color patterns and styles. Whether it's a custom-made engine cover for your new C8 or custom-made C4 interior upgrades, American Hydrocarbon can help you transform your Corvette into a best-in-class show car. And now, we're proud to announce that we can produce and distribute officially licensed GM products products for the C8 Corvette, including front splitters, side skirts, engine appearance panels, engine fluid caps, door holders, trunk and front props, and more. Plus, we now carry the C8 Speedline side skirts, along with the engine appearance package and the high wing. Give us a call at 813-476-5638. Visit our updated website at AmericanHydrocarbon.com or email us at pat at AmericanHydrocarbon.com. Make your Corvette the car you've always wanted it to be with American Hydrocarbon. And now, back to Corvette Today with your host and my husband, Steve Garrett. Hey, thanks once again for listening and watching Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by Wheelcraft. Want to dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels? Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models, and it comes with a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com today or call them at 833 833- 840-5334. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me every other week is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. And don't forget, if you want a deeper dive into any of these stories we talk about, you can always go to CorvetteBlogger.com. In this final section, we always talk about the lighter side of Corvette. Keith, we just had a big, big auction in your neck of the woods. Meekum Kissimmee was last week. We have some top 10 results and the first Z06 flip as well. Yeah, so they had 4,200 vehicles consigned to their January kickoff auction, which is an amazing number. They only had 3,000 last year. So think about that. They added 1,200 or so cars. Wow. And that included about 430 Corvettes. So there was Corvettes everywhere. We were over there last Friday for the big day and really had a great time over there. They really do it up. Our Detroit bureau, Steve Burns, did the analysis on this. He said that money was flying around Florida last week faster than classified documents flowing out of Joe Biden's garage. (laughs) He says prices were high on seemingly everything 
everything. And in fact, 25% of the Corvette docket sold for over $100,000. We got a rundown of all the prices. The docket had actually 82% sale through rate. So 82% sold. The total sales, $30.5 million in Corvette sales alone. So wow. 355 Corvettes flipped hands and the hottest Corvettes of the auction were the mid-years. And actually the C7 ZR1s are amazing cars and they're doing well. The top Corvette sale was a black coupe from 1967. It had the L71 435 horsepower engine and it sold for 495. Second place was that very first Stingray. It was the VIN number 003, 1963 Stingray. Sold for 467,000. A little bit lower than its pre-auction estimate of between 600 and 800,000, but it did sell. Steve always likes to give out the El Cheapo Award for the most cost-efficient Corvette at the auction. And that one was actually a 93 40th anniversary convertible, which sold at no reserve for $5,500. As you mentioned, one of the most interesting cars that we saw flip was a 2023 Corvette Z06 with the 1LZ trim package. That car hammered for $250,000, and its total sales price with commission was $275,000. It was after the sale that we learned that this was a flip, meaning that the original owner sold it and now there's the warranty issue and all that stuff. The car was purchased by a late model reseller out of Florida. One of the dealer's friends that we know looked it up and saw that the warranty for the car actually started last December. It was a low mile car. I think it only had like 17 miles on it. But because this was flipped within six months, the buyer of this car won't receive the warranty. It's possible this car could even be on a boat headed overseas already. We just don't know what's going to happen to it. But another interesting point is that Mecham catalog description did not mention the warranty status on this car. So maybe the buyer didn't know that the warranty is now voided with the car. So, I mean, it brings up all kinds of issues with this. You got to hold it for six months kind of thing. That car, I think the MSRP on it was probably 115 is what I saw. To sell for 275, I think we'll probably end up seeing the dams burst open and more people flipping their Z06s now that we've had somebody go first. Those are amazing numbers, buddy. And speaking of Corvettes changing hands, the first C8 Z06 went to Auto Trader, didn't it? Yeah, so we caught this at the very beginning of the month. We talked about that first Z06 order cycle last year. There were 120 dealer stock orders out of about 500 allocations. When you do a dealer stock order, the dealer has total control over the ordering process, and it can sell the car for whatever they want the price to be. And so these Corvettes are new from the dealer, so the buyer does get the full warranty, but market adjustments were steep with the majority that we saw in Auto Trader priced at over $100,000. There were several new Z06s, but they were all the base aero models. That's why our headline suggested bringing a banker because there were some steep ADMs being added to those prices. Also, this is really cool to see, and I'm looking forward to seeing this when we go to the birthday bash in late April. The National Corvette Museum is hosting some exhibits to celebrate Corvette's 70th anniversary. Yeah, one of the big ones they've got coming in is called The Legendary Creations of Carl Casper. Carl Casper was a customizer of cars in the 50s and 60s and 70s. He did a Turbo Shark Corvette, the Popcorn Wagon, Young American Dragster, the Paddy Wagon. But probably his most famous car is he did the 1992 Batmobile for the Batman Returns movie. That actually is going to kick off that exhibit March 10th through the beginning of next year. We'll be able to see that one when we go to the bash. Apparently, they're also planning another 70th anniversary celebration with a new exhibit of the iconic cars from each of the eight generations of Corvette to spotlight those big milestones in Corvette history. And then we've got the annual shows already set up. So the Michelin Bash in April, Military Appreciation Month, and the Vets and Vets event in May. And then at the end of the year, we've got the 29th NCM anniversary celebration in August that also culminates in the Corvette Hall of Fame induction ceremony. We went to the Hall of Fame induction ceremony last year, completely revamped. It's basically the Oscars now for Corvette. They've done a great job in really pumping this up. So we definitely recommend if you're around the museum anytime in September, you might want to take in that Corvette Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It was a pretty special thing. It's a great time. I went to one of them and I loved it. I'd love to go back. Also, we saw Corvette beating Porsche, thank goodness, as the most satisfying car to own. That is outstanding as well. Now, this is a Consumer Reports report. They always haven't been supportive of Corvettes, but they did do these annual surveys. So they asked owners of new 2023 vehicles about their satisfaction levels, and 94% of Corvette owners said that they would do it again. That number beats that Porsche 911, who only had 90% answer that they'd make the same choice. People love their new Corvettes. You're not going to get them to change anytime soon with that car, it seems like. Yeah, absolutely right. And our final story is a fun story. It's a Corvette trivia game with New Roads magazine. 
Yeah, so New Rose Magazine obviously is the online version of the printed magazine that Chevrolet puts out. But they had this really fun Corvette trivia contest. It was 20 questions. They asked, what's your CQ for, I guess, the Corvette quotient of what you know about Corvette trivia? So there's 20 questions. Some of them are pretty hard. I actually scored a 19 out of 20. I missed a question on Corvette racing, actually. If you haven't taken the chance yet, do it. I had our writers do it. I know Mitch got a 17 out of 20 on it. There's some pictures in the trivia so that might help you with your decisions. It's fun, so I'd recommend you do it if you haven't got a chance. We've got that linked on Corvette Blogger. I'm going to do it this week. That'll be a lot of fun. I'd like Corvette trivia, so this will be a good time. Buddy, thank you so much for being on Corvette today. Have a good week, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah, we got all kinds of news happening. Of course, we'll have more E-Race stuff coming out this week. We've got the Rolex 24 happening over the weekend. And then, of course, everything else that's going on. We'll see you out on the roads and make sure you throw up that hand and keep waving. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today. And please be sure to tell your family, friends, and other Corvette enthusiasts about the Corvette Today podcast. And thanks to our sponsors, Wheelcraft. Want to dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels? Visit wheelcraft.com to learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models, and it comes with a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com today or call 833-840-5334. American Hydrocarbon at AmericanHydrocarbon.com, True Wealth and Company at RetireWithTrue.com. Also, Aerolari Wheels, get $100 off your purchase with the new promo code CT111 at Aerolari.com. And Hendrick Chevrolet in Kansas City at ChevyUSA.com. You've been listening to Corvette Today with Steve Garrett. If you'd like to contact Steve with any thoughts on the podcast or ideas for guests on Corvette Today, you can email him at stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. That's stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. Or connect with Steve on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using at stevegarrettdj. Thanks again for listening to Corvette Today.